basically Google is looking for good quality websites, has up-to-date information and basically offers real benefits to visitors of that website. At the end of the day, if you try and use sneaky tricks to try and get yourself um, more promptly shown in search engine results, um, increasingly Google will find out about these sneaky tricks and you'll get penalized for them. So don't be tempted to um, search for information about uh, maybe black hat techniques or techniques that might give you a temporary boost in search engines because in the end Google will find out it's much better to take a long view of SEO and play by the rules that are laid down by SEO and if you give Google what it wants Google will reward you it's as simple as that white hat versus black hat SEO basically white hat SEO are using techniques that Google likes so for instance if you read the guidelines issued by Google it'll tell you you should have a properly formatted title and description it will tell you to use your uh, important keyword phrases within your websites in moderation and there's a load of other stuff that Google will basically hint at that uh, are techniques you should use Black Hat SEO on the other hand are basically using sneaky tricks to try and trick Google into promoting your um, particular websites or pages uh, within the search engine results using sort of underhand means and increasingly Google is getting very good at finding these black hat techniques um, so for instance an obvious example of a black hat technique would be maybe um, at the bottom of your web pages having your keywords listed over and over again now there are numerous examples of websites that have been completely delisted from the Google index um, for either directly um, trying to spam the search engine results or maybe they've been using a third-party SEO company which in turn was using sneaky um, underhand techniques to try and promote the websites within Google. Um, Well-known examples of this are BMW in Germany who got banned for a while and more recently Interflora uh, got completely banned from the UK index for a while. In both cases allegedly uh, they'd outsourced the work and the, um, the party doing the SEO work for them had in some way infringed the terms of service as issued by Google. Now the Google Webmaster Guidelines. The good news is that if you bother to take the trouble to read them, Google does actually issue quite detailed guidelines about what you should and shouldn't do. If you want to look at these guidelines, simply go to Google and search using the phrase Google Webmaster Guidelines and you'll find the relevant pages displayed. So here we have the Google Webmaster Guidelines and as you can see there's quite a lot of detailed stuff here but basically there's three different uh, areas. There's design and content guidelines, there's technical guidelines and there's quality guidelines. Design and content guidelines. As you can see the first item there says make a site with a clear hierarchy and text links. Every page should be reachable for, one, for at least one static text link. So there it is, that's from Google. It's basically saying that Google likes text links, so that's a good piece of information. The next item says, offer a sitemap to your users with links that point to the important parts of your website. If the sitemap has an extremely large number of links, you may want to break the sitemap into multiple pages. So basically, this is a question where you can read between the lines. It's, it's basically telling you that um, Google likes um, a sitemap, and a sitemap is simply a page on your website that basically lists other pages, the important pages on your website. Uh, so it likes that, but it's also telling you, if you read between the lines, which is quite often important with Google, it's also telling you don't put too many links on one page because Google doesn't like that. In fact, the next item there says keep the number of links on a given page to a reasonable number. Unfortunately, Google never tells you what a reasonable number is, but again, you can just use common sense here. The next point says create a useful information-rich site and write pages that clearly and accurately describe your content. So again you have to read between the lines what Google is basically saying here is write pages that um, basically relate to your product or service and don't try and sort of sneak extra things in that's what it's really telling you because it does say accurately describe your content so don't try and sneak extra bits and pieces in on a particular page just for the sake of SEO. Next thing it says, think about the words users would type to find your pages and make sure your site actually includes these words within it. So again, it's kind of obvious in a way, but 
if you're a plumber in Perth and if you don't use the words plumber and Perth in your pages then it's pretty unlikely Google is going to um, understand that your particular website is about a plumbing service in Perth so again a lot of this is kind of obvious but you just got to think of it from a search engines point of view content is king Google is on record as basically saying what it's looking for is good quality websites with high quality information that's actually worth reading if you just simply stuff your um, web pages with low quality information purely for the benefit of the search engines then increasingly Google is wise to this and it will find this out the other thing about having quality content according to Google anyway is that if you have good quality content this will attract what's called natural linking so if you've um, let's say you've got a plumbing site and you've got some pages on there about general advice how to fix leaky tap or whatever it happens to be providing you provide the good quality information the idea is that people will automatically start linking to your website as a good source of information, as a sort of reference source, if you like. And uh, certainly in Google's view, this is how um, linking should start working in your in your favour, because ba basically people will start linking to your website as a reference site. Freshness. This is another Google concept, and basically freshness means um, up-to-date content. So what Google likes is to see websites that have good quality information and up-to-date quality information and information that changes on a regular basis. Now the way Google works is that initially Google will come to your website and it might just index the home page and it'll take a snapshot of that and try and figure out what your site is about and it'll start uh, using that information in the search engine results. Then Google will go away and then it'll come back again. And the next time it comes back, if, it, if Google notices there's differences and things have changed, then basically Google says, well, this site has been maintained, it's been updated recently, um, it's got good quality content, and it's up-to-date quality content. So that's really what freshness is about. It's about um, quality websites that are updated on a regular basis, and Google will reward you for this. Now, loading speed. This is another thing that Google is quite keen on at the moment. It uh, basically rewards websites that load faster than slow websites. Um, at the end of the day, when you first display a website, it always takes a little bit of time to load. Um, but you've probably all been to websites where, um, especially if they've got very large pictures or maybe they've got some flash embedded in it or some other technology, sometimes it can take literally you know, five, six, seven, ten seconds to load. And this is the sort of thing that you'll get yourselves penalized on these days. So what you should do is look at your website, load it up, and basically think, well, did that load up fast enough? If the website doesn't load fast, then you need to start thinking about ways of getting it to load faster. Maybe make your um, file sizes smaller if you've got lots of pictures. Or if you've got movies that are being shown on your website, again, you might want to optimize these in some way so that they actually load faster. A backlink is basically a link from somebody else's website to your website. Now back in the day all that mattered was the number of links not the quality and these days it's the other way around. So these days even if you just have a few links but if they're good quality links then that is worth a lot more than possibly hundreds of low quality backlinks. Now a mistake that a lot of website owners have made over the years is that they've gone out and uh, they bought in links from a company that sells um, links by the hundred or by the thousand and these days uh, if you buy low quality links to your website you'll find you can actually get penalized for this so this is a really bad idea these days what you want are um, links from high quality sites by high quality I mean links that, from websites that have basically a high page rank um, basically have a good standing if you like what you don't want are links from websites that are known as spammy websites or sp uh, sites that maybe host uh, malicious software on them. Those are the sort of links you definitely do not want. And again, these days, there is a whole industry um, in actually identifying the bad links to people's websites and getting rid of them. Uh, interestingly, Google um, fairly recently introduced a new tool so that if someone was linking to you from a bad website area, then you could use what's called the disavow tool and basically this wouldn't actually remove the link because that would be on somebody else's website but you could ask Google to try and please ignore that link um, because it's been put in place, you've done your best to get rid of it and if um, people won't remove the links to your website from bad areas 
then the best you can do is ask Google to sort of overlook it as it were. But as I say, quality is important, not quantity. These days it's very important to realize that uh, having bad links from other sites to your website can actually harm your website these days. Internal linking. In the same way that you can link to other people's websites and other, people webs other people's websites can link to you, um, you can also link between the pages within your website. And again, it's worth thinking about the structure of your website. So obviously you've got your home page and then generally the important other pages would be things like the products page or maybe the about us page or something like that. So basically you want to make sure that um, you have clear text-based links to all your important um, web pages within your website. Using keyword phrases within your page text. It might seem obvious, but um, as an SEO company, we see this over and over again. You know, people ring us up and say, well, we're, a, for the sake of argument, a plumbing company in uh, JuneLab. And they say, when we type in um, plumbing JuneLab, we're not, you know, we just can't be found. We're just not there. And then we, when we go and actually investigate their uh, websites, they might possibly have the word plumbing, but not the word JuneLab. And if you don't have specific text mentioned within your websites, then Google's not going to know about it. So, you know, if you are a plumbing company in JuneLab, then it's kind of obvious in a way, but you must make sure that the words plumbing and plumbers and variations on that theme, that's contained within your website, along with the actual words like JuneLab or Perth or other associated suburbs. Um, so again, it's really obvious when you think about it, but it's amazing how often we see this kind of mistake. So just make sure your important keyword phrases are actually listed within the text contained within your website. Titles and description that match page content. When people start researching SEO for themselves, pretty soon they discover the importance of what's called the page title and also the page description. Um, but unfortunately that's just half the story. You should make sure that you have a good page title and a good page description and you should make sure that the title and description actually matches the content on every single page. So by extension from that, it basically means you need a different title and a different description on every single page. You should have unique titles and unique descriptions. And again, it's a very common mistake we see that um, when we go and look at people's web pages, every single page within the website has exactly the same title and exactly the same description regardless of the actual content on each page and as I say this is a very common error and uh, Google will certainly not reward you for having dupl duplicate um, titles everywhere in fact there aren't tools available from Google that will allow you to identify the fact you've got duplicate titles or duplicate descriptions on different pages that are using the same titles and descriptions and that's a pretty good ind indication of the fact that Google doesn't like that sort of shortcut. You should have unique titles, unique descriptions for every single page.